Thank you. My name is Joanne Bender and I brought two items here today. The first one is a railroad lantern that my poppy used. He shoveled coal into the trains that ran from the, it's the police station in Milton now, but it was the train station. And actually when I went to nursing school uh, in 1967, I could get the train in Milton, ride it to Harrisburg, switch to Lancaster, and ride the train down and back, which was really a fun time for me. And the other item that we brought today is there was a mill, and it's still in town, uh, Custer's Mill. And this is a rolling pin, and it's now called Rhodes's Mills. And the other story that I would like to tell you uh, about Milton, uh, when I was a young girl, my youngest sister got very sick. Back then, family doctors made house calls. His name was Dr. Carr. He came to our house one evening, uh, somewhere between 10.30 and 11 o'clock, and told my parents that they had to take my youngest sister to the hospital. And they did, and she was in a diabetic coma. And I have been very thankful that he saved her life and the kind of medicine that he practiced. And I'm very proud to live in a blue collar town because, you know, when I was a young girl, um, the Presbyterian Church sponsored uh, an Eastern European family, the Schwartzes. Then when I was in high school and the Vietnam War was going on, the Lutheran Church sponsored a Vietnamese family. And I think although we are a small town, we are very open to other races and religions. Can you tell me, um, this doctor that you were speaking of, can you tell me his first name? Richard. Richard Carr. K-A-A-R. And the interesting thing about him, he was also an artist. And he painted pictures and his family, after his death, took what they wanted and then they donated the pictures to the Historical Society. So Bob and I went down and bought a painting and brought it home and then I thought, we really should have another one. So we went back down and we bought, we have four children, so we bought four more. And then I got home and I thought, oh my word, my sister who was diabetic that he diagnosed, um, she has one child, so I thought she should really have a picture and know the story. So I went back down and his son was like really teasing me. He goes, now, how many paintings of my dad's are you going to buy tonight? I can give you a group discount. But that hangs proudly in our dining room and it's nice to have artwork for a man that really meant a lot to our family. Of course. And I'm done. <laughs> Before we finish up, can I just ask you a few more questions about the items oh. that you brought? Sure. Um, can you tell me around the, about the age of the lantern? Can you estimate? My poppy was born in 1898. So I would say by the time he was 20, 22, he was working on the railroad. So about right like after 19. World War One, because he was a medic in World War One. And in fact, my brother has his discharge papers that um, General Patton signed. So. And what is about the age of the rolling pin? I would say that's early 1900s okay. when that flour mill was in town. And it, it's now on the side of the building, you can still see Custer's flour mill, but it's now called Rhodes's flour mill. And I think there's also a Rhodes flour mill in Seelman's Grove. Okay. Now the, the lantern, obviously, that was probably passed down. What about the rolling pin? Was that passed down through your family as well? No. No. How did you acquire that? I read at a public sale that it was going for sale and my grandparents lived in the house right beside this flour mill so I just wanted to have it. So that's fantastic. Um, so before we finish up, um, for those of us unfamiliar with Milton and Milton's really rich history, what do your items tell us about the town? I think back in an age when people were very happy to have a job they were hard working and, you know, didn't have a lot of benefits like we have today. It, it was just a work ethic that was passed down to my entire family, that you did the best you could. Uh, you are polite to your garbage man as you were to your milkman because, you know, as a child, milk was always delivered to our house and my girlfriend's father was the milk, was our milkman. <laughs> and I mean, I just think when you look at any kind of business, it's like a ladder, 
and your executive is going to be at the top, but it takes a whole team to get a job done. And this is a town that works as a team. <clears throat> after the fires, after the floods, you know, we just came together and it didn't matter who you were. You know, you just went and helped people unload their houses of furniture and hoping to save it. I heard a couple gentlemen I interviewed earlier, they said Milton always comes back stronger. I think so too.